My name is Paola Calleja, a urologist at the University Hospital Marques de Valdecilla, and I will talk about the learning curve for PBF repair. Urogenital fistula is a major health issue, especially in developing countries, which can cause severe psychosocial distress. However, it is an uncommon problem in the developed countries. Therefore, results might be influenced by the workload the surgeon encounters in the daily practice. Learning curves have been demonstrated for many urological procedures, but have not been yet identified for vesicovaginal fistula repair. The aim of the study is to expose the results of BVF repair by a single surgeon and identify the learning curve for vesicovaginal fistula repair. The first 100 women having surgery for BBF under the care of one surgeon between January 2002 and March 2019 were retrospectively identified. Data on patient demographics, fistula etiology, fistula size, surgical approach and outcomes were collected. All patients underwent examination under anesthesia and assistoscopy. Most of the patients were further studied with a CTU and MRI. The surgery was performed by a single surgeon. Vaginal approach was attempted when feasible. Fistula tract was excised and a marsh's fat pad was used as an interposition graft. When the vaginal root was discarded and an abdominal repair was used, omentum or peritoneum were used as interposition grafts. Absolute indications for abdominal repair were considered the need for simultaneous ureteric implantation or the closure of associated by well fistulae into the urinary tract or the skin. The results were reviewed overall and bipartile. The median age of the cohort was 50 years, in a range from 22 to 88 years. There were no significant differences in patient or fistula demographics. 10 patients had undergone previous closure attempts. Median fistula size was 1 cm in a range from 2 mm to 7 cm. Regarding location, 81 patients had a vesicovaginal fistula, while 19 patients suffered from urethrovaginal fistula. There was concomitant ureteric involvement in 9% of the patients and an additional colovaginal fistula in 4% of the cases. The most frequent cause of BVF was gynecological surgery, accounting for more than half of the cases, followed by urological surgery. Obstetric fistula represented only 8% of the cases. Only 22% of the cases were due to a malignant cause. Over this period, six patients were not considered for repair, mainly due to extensive radiotherapy damage. The remaining 94 patients underwent fistula repair. A tendency towards vaginal repair increase can be noticed over time, from 78% in the first quartile to 83% in the fourth quartile, although this was not statistically significant. Assuming only absolute indications would result in abdominal repair, an increase of true vaginal repair is also noticeable over time, again, no statistically significant. Closure at first attempt improved with experience, regardless of proof of repair being 100% in the last quartile. Considering 100% of success after primary closure, the optimal result, it would take approximately 75 cases to reach the plateau of the learning curve. In conclusion, contrary to developing countries, obstructive labor is not an issue in our setting. Most of our cases developed after gynecological or urological surgery. Vaginal repair is a viable option in most of the cases, except from those which need a ureteric reimplantation or bowel fistula closure. Experience seems to be determinant in the use of vaginal repair and the primary closure rate. BBF closure rates are excellent in experienced hands. There is a learning curve in BBF repair, which appears to be about 75 cases. Thank you for your time.